Hey guys, hope everyone's doing good. I uh, wanted to make a video for a while now about leaf spring traction bars. Don't really have a ton of exciting content right now for the car. I'll give you guys a quick little update. So I haven't done anything with the front suspension really. I did manage to get my fuel pump drive and everything all mounted back up. I got the alternator mounted. See all that stuff down there. Uh, I got the turbo back in place. I actually was able to use my old one, so I've got the turbo mount. Uh, pretty well mocked up, just got to weld it. I've got the uh, I've got the motor plate spacers all cut down, the motor moved back uh, as far as I can. I've got the engine limiters uh, built. I got my training cross member is all done. It's back installed. I got my drive shaft loop uh, reinstalled. Basically had to get all redone with the new subframe. I did start welding the panels back on that I had to cut out so I could weld the strut bars in. So I got one side all welded back on, pretty much ready to start grinding that off and move over to the other side. But uh, I'll probably show you guys all that on the next video. So like I say, I did want to do a traction bar video. So when it comes to the traction bars, basically they're just trying to do two things. They're trying to control the spring wrap and then they're trying to uh, add leverage to the front of the leaf spring eye to help drive the car forward. So there's a few major brands that build them, obviously Caltrax, uh, Smith Racecraft Assassin Bars, which is what I'm running. Uh, competition engineering have the slide -a link I think they call it. Yeah, they're all basically trying to do the same thing. So is any of them any better than the others? I don't know. Um, the only reason I went with the assassin bars uh, was just when I moved my leaf springs in, that kind of front configuration kind of worked better for what I was trying to do. And also they have a lot more adjustment holes. So when it comes to setting up the bars, there's tons of videos on how to do that. It's basically just setting the preload on the bars or setting the gap on them. Uh, generally, I usually run my driver's side one just barely touching, and then I set my passenger bar to have a bit of preload. Basically, the amount of preload that you have is what's used to make the car drive straight. So if the car is driving to the right, you wanna add preload to the right side bar. What that's gonna do is it's gonna add pressure to the right side tire so that it drives the car towards the left and same thing if it was driving left you would add preload to the left bar so that it puts more pressure on the left tire and starts driving the car to the right i would you probably do uh like one to two flats at a time just to get the car corrected that's kind of the first step in adjusting them the first thing you're going to be doing on the first few passes uh just getting the car to go straight stay in the groove basically after you get that sorted out then you've got uh the bar angle to consider so when it comes to bar angle, uh, if you're running the Smith Racecraft bars, uh, you got a lot of holes in the rear and you got a lot of holes in the front that you can use. If you're running Caltrax, uh, I think they generally only have one hole in the rear and some of them have two holes in the front. But basically, uh, the more angle you have on this bar, the lower you have it in the back and the higher you have it in the front, that's going to hit the tire the hardest. The higher you have the bar in the back, and the lower you have it in the front, that's gonna hit the tire the softest. So there's a lot of other factors that come into how it's gonna hit the tire. Your launch RPM, uh, if you're leaving on boost or nitrous, uh, all that stuff, tire pressure, shock settings, all of that stuff has to work together to basically hit the tire just right. You don't wanna hit the tire too hard, crush the tire into the ground, gets all out of shape. Uh, you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna hit the tire too soft because you want it to actually set the tire and start working the suspension. And that's all stuff you're just gonna have to figure out as you're tuning the car. So in pretty general terms, and if you weren't changing uh, anything with your tune or anything, if you lower the back of your bar down more, it's gonna hit the tire harder. If you uh, lower the front of your bar, it's gonna hit the tire softer. So that's why you see a lot of no prep guys will drop the rear of their bar down really low because it's hitting the tire. Uh, it's putting more leverage on the front spring eye and hitting the tire even harder. So uh, one thing I have done is I made this little adapter, I guess you would call it. So it basically bolts right in there and gives me another inch of drop on the rear of the bar. So lets the bar come down even further. So basically just bolts on the rear bracket and gives me another hole an inch lower. And where I use that is if I'm on a really crappy surface and I'm leaving with a really low launch RPM, uh, no boost, I don't have 
all of that power from the engine to set the tire. So you've got to loosen the shocks up. You've got to do stuff like this. So basically the suspension will still work the same uh, with a lot less power being applied. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but if you're applying less power and you leave your shocks, leave your bars all the same, the suspension's not going to work the same. It's not going to move much because you don't have that power being applied to it. And then it goes the opposite way too. If you're putting more power to the car, you're probably going to have to raise that bar back up or lower the front of the bar so that it doesn't hit the tire so hard because now you have all that power from the engine. It's going to work the tire, work the suspension even harder, and you need to control that so that it doesn't hit the tire too hard. So it's a pretty big balancing act on trying to get everything to work together. And the harder part is, especially with no prep, is you might be running on a really good surface, so you need to kind of tighten everything up because uh, you're going to be putting more power down right on the hit. Or you might be on a really crappy surface or a bare, bare surface where you're not going to be putting any power to it, but you still want the suspension to set. You still want the suspension to work and apply pressure to the tires so that you can put that little bit of power down and still make good hits. So again, I don't know if that totally makes sense, but it all works together. It's all relative to how much power you're applying. Uh, the more power you put in it, the more you're going to have to tighten everything up in the rear. So basically just, that's just a generic, uh, how, how the traction bars work at different angles, uh, how it hits the tire, little things you can do to change that. Uh, even if the holes aren't there, uh, make your own holes. You can make, you can make a whole nother rear bracket. I've done that before. Before I used to run Caltrack bars, I drilled another hole in the front to raise the front of the bar up. So it would hit the tire harder. It, you really just have to do what you have to do to make the suspension work the way it's got to work. In my opinion, a leaf spring car, you want it to separate a little bit, half an inch probably, maybe a little more. Uh, you want it to do set the tire in place. It's probably it's going to wrinkle the sidewall up a little bit, and you want it to kind of roll out like that. Sidewall will be wrinkled a little bit for, I don't know, 5, 10, 15, 20 feet, something like that. And then it all should come back to, to shape, to round again and probably get a little bit of wheel speed and just go right on through there. Uh, I don't know if exactly if that's uh, how it's supposed to work. I'm definitely not an expert at this, but that's kind of what I shoot for with my car. If you're smacking the tire into the ground, it just gets all out of shape. You don't have the full contact patch on the ground anymore. It's just not going to be as fast. You want it to be nice, smooth, set the tire, work the suspension. It's going to it's going to put leverage on the front leaf spring mount, and it's just going to help drive the car forward. So there is more to it than that as far as bar angle goes. I think they generally say you want the bar to be slightly higher in the back compared to the chassis basically or like level to the ground. If it's on a big angle to hit the tire super hard, it's going to hit the tire super hard. It's going to plant the tire really, really hard, really fast, but it's not going to stay planted as long. So that's just another factor to keep in mind. In my opinion, your shock settings and your tune or your launch is going to have a way bigger effect on how it's hitting the tire and everything than the traction bars do. I've tried the traction bars in all different kinds of angles and yeah, it makes a difference, but you've got to have your shock settings pretty close. You got to have your launch RPM, tire pressure, timing retard ramp, all that stuff's got to be close. The bar angle and the whole settings and everything, it makes a difference, but You've got to have the other stuff right too. You really just need to get out there, try stuff, see what works for your setup. Everyone's different. So quick recap. Uh, basically, the lower you have the bar in the back, higher in the front, it's going to hit the tire the hardest. 
but it's not going to keep it planted as long. Uh, if you've got the bar pointed uh, down in the front, up in the rear, it's going to hit the tire the softest and it's going to keep it planted for longer. And then the preload is used to uh, drive the car left or right. Everything's got to work together. And then as you start applying more or less power, it's all going to change a little bit. So be prepared to try lots of stuff. Basically, you want the suspension to pretty much always work the same. You want it to always hit the tire the same way, roll out the same way. But the problem is you might be running way different. You might be running a, like a second difference in ETs between different surfaces. So that's where changing the bar angle or changing the shock settings is going to let you hit the tire the same when you're applying a lot more power or a lot less power from your tune-up. So that's all I got for you guys. I'll do another update video soon. I'm going to get the front suspension going soon. I just really wanted to tie up all the kind of loose ends I had uh, make my big to-do list a little smaller and uh, make me not feel so overwhelmed, I guess you could say. So I'm working on it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, do me a favor, hit that button. And if you got a comment, throw it up there. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.